Hi there, my name is Ryan Anderson. Uh, this is a informal playback on a one-week sprint we did called Project Skittles. Um, it deals with augmented reality visualizations of Wi-Fi and LTE or 4G signal strength. It's a, a very raw and formal proof of concept. Uh, what we're doing here is we're building a little bit on uh, some work that was done a couple of weeks ago by our friend Jake, uh, where we took some dummy data and we pushed it into a Magic Leap headset and overlaid it into a, a residence to simulate um, signal intensity and strength of Wi-Fi. So we're taking a little further here with Project Skittles. So um, what we'll do here is we'll talk a little bit about the problem statement and the objective here. Uh, and then we'll go into the getting of the data, the measuring of signal strength, actual values this time, uh, cleaning and interpreting the data, talk a little bit about decibels and receive signal strength. Uh, processing and hosting the data, in this case we'll use Watson Studio, visualizing and delivering the data through immersive data, um, through an, an AR augmented reality medium. This could be a, an iPad or, or an AR headset. And then lastly, sort of uh, round it out with the practical applications and, and uh, um, assess usefulness here. So uh, let's start out with the problem statement and the objective here. Weak or poor quality signals for 3G, LTE, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi is a source of pain and sadness for people. Um, and this is both folks inside the walls of a factory or an office or externally on the street if you are or in your home. Um, and we have a hypothesis. We believe that better tools to both survey the level of the signals across these uh, spectrum and to visualize and understand weak spots or, or changes uh, would be useful and helpful to help stakeholders make the changes to stop the pain. Uh, and these stakeholders that would be making these changes and, and visualizing could range anywhere from a homeowner or somebody who's running Wi-Fi or, or private LTE um, in their um, place of business, um, all the way up to people um, on top of buildings or poles that are charged with uh, um, putting up antennas or directing antennas for 5G, for example. And especially with the advent of 5G, uh, um, fre the frequency wavelengths in 5G are different. Uh, the physics probably uh, mean that this is going to be a little bit more of a pressing need here. The lack of the ability of some of the 5G spectra to penetrate walls, for example, and cast greater shadows is, is probably going to be an interesting uh, time for folks um, seeking to optimize. So. So our objective here, if we're leveraging these new technologies, can we provide a material improvement over the current tools uh, for the current stakeholders? So these could be an, the antenna techs working for telcos uh, or people, CIO, CTO office charged with uh, lighting up 99 or 100 percent of uh, a premises with connectivity. Um, and does augmented reality, is, does it lend itself to being a, a good tool for this? And think a little bit about survey methods. We did it quite manually in this case, but, you know, drones are an option, Roombas. Um, even using the devices in people's pockets as sensory points to sort of have an informal way of, of data gathering. So let's get some real data. To, to start with the Wi-Fi, um, if you've got a MacBook, uh, if you copy and paste this in, you will get a, uh, um, a reading, and a received signal strength indicator in decibels. Um, as you can see here, a, uh, these are negative numbers. So the, the larger the magnitude of the negative number, the worse off you are, the smaller the magnitude of the negative number, uh, the better. And this is a way that we surveyed for the Wi-Fi data. For the LTE data, if you Google measure signal strength on a phone, you'll see this um, combination come up. And by doing this, you can get measured RSSI or RSRP or uh, measured or average RSRP. We used measured RSSI here, signal strength indication. Uh, and there's some good uh, blogs um, on this, but this is a, uh, a way to measure your uh, cell phone uh, signal intensity. Um, and, and allows you to get the data. In both of these cases, Wi-Fi and LTE, a uh, little lesson learned as we were manually surveying, don't move too fast. There's a little bit of a, a moving window um, effect. And if you try move too quickly and don't let it stabilize five, 10 seconds, you might, might find that you're jumping the gun a little bit. So there looks like there's a you know, two, three seconds of sampling window and probably a, a trailing average of, of a few windows before things typically stabilize. Uh, the survey data, uh, we were in San Francisco at Watson West, 505 Howard Street, up on the 8th floor. There's the GPS coordinates, and there's a footprint that you can see of the area that we'll be getting to in a second. Um, we did a very low-tech method. Uh, if you've got a buddy, that's terrific. Uh, we basically made a chessboard grid of an 8x8, so 64 squares, um, in, a, in about a 40 by 32 foot area. Uh, we marked our X and Y lanes. Uh, we try to maintain consistency by laying 
the phone or the device down on that flat little table there and rolling it around so we had the same altitude uh, and we generally maintain the orientation of the, the same corner of the device pointing to the same corner of the, uh, the building. Um, we did find out um, that the room is rectangular as the dimensions would indicate um, and uh, in retrospect we probably would have uh, made our grid an 8 by 10 or, or not, not a square grid on a on a rectangular room. So some lessons learned there. We, we adapted to it, but uh, um, in our enthusiasm to get going, we, uh, we chose the wrong shape of grid and added a little bit of work there. Uh, the last thing is you think you know where the data is going to be, but data can rotate, especially rectangular data. Uh, so having some sort of a point riding along with the data to make sure that you know um, which corner is the right corner is helpful. We had a couple of very um, dark spots, very red spots here, which helped us sort of figure it out if we were rotated off or not. But uh, Having some data as an anchor point right, right along is a lesson that we learned that we'll be doing for next time. And then as I mentioned, slow down. Uh, it's a rolling average and needs a, a few seconds to settle in. Um, that paper that you see there, the pencil is our, um, our, our cell phone data and the pen is the, the Wi-Fi um, data that we gathered from there, from our survey. And then you clean it up a little bit and you can see old uh, our friend Excel here. Uh, put in some of the data, the data readings. Uh, again, the higher amplitude numbers here, the, the larger negative numbers indicate a worse signal, um, and the greens um, are a better signal. And um, surprise, as we, we crunch the data from the Wi-Fi node, uh, my assumption, having a desk in the top right corner there, uh, was that I was using the node that was in the room, and as it turns out, the Wi-Fi that I've typically been using has been in the room um, up and to the left uh, uh, through the glass wall there. So um, the uh, interesting uh, observation and also uh, illuminating for me as to why I got such poor signal as I moved towards the kitchen even though I was only about eight feet from the Wi-Fi node 2 because I was actually running on Wi-Fi node 1. So uh, this is uh, some cleaning up and interpretation of the data and making it a little bit more portable. Uh, CSV if you like or whatever uh, data format you wish. And this is our um, cell phone data and we saw some signal shadows here there was some large concrete uh, circular post and a, a big, big square pillar and behind the pillar we saw a substantial reduction on the order of sometimes 20 decibels difference uh, behind these things and, and there was a fairly consistent um, shadows that we saw being cast behind these large objects including the, the concrete post but also television sets big screen tvs that probably have a, a metal plate somewhere in them so um, that was a, a really interesting thing and, and nice to see a level of consistency in the assumed direction of the, uh, the cell phone um, um, origin points. Uh, just be a little bit careful here if your phone jumps towers. Um, if you're right in between, you might find that uh, uh, you're getting very strange readings. Uh, there are ways within the, uh, the app that was on the earlier page ch to check which is of your primary and your secondary uh, cell phone origin point. Um, but these two are these are good maps as you go in and sanity check your point cloud data as we see in later on uh, to make sure you've got scaling right and colors right and you're communicating what you want this can be a good way to, to go ahead and do that um, we used ibm cloud to, to host the data and land the data um, our friend jay and uh, others will be uh, have a little more to say about this for links but uh, that's where we landed it and then in terms of visualizing and delivering the data, um, our friends on the immersive data team have been doing some great things around using AR um, glasses and AR devices like iPads and iPhones to overlay real world data um, onto the real world. And uh, here's a couple of examples of, of the UX for that, some links down at the bottom. Um, and um, on the backbone of immersive data, used to be called immersive insights, um, we can project this data. So now we can take this data that we sampled um, and that was invisible and now make it quite visible and um, interpretable. So this could be one or many people can be looking through the lenses. You can, um, down the line if you want to, query the data and, and switch between different frequencies or pre and post configuration. This really allows a way to, to visualize the otherwise invisible radiation um, that, that's um, um, covering the area and allows the people that care about coverage of signal strength for Wi-Fi or LTE or 5G uh, to have another lens through which they can look to see what those levels are. All this, of course, assumes that you have some method of surveying it, whether it's in back pocket or drones or Roombas or people rolling around with, with uh, um, you know, yellow pads of paper and doing it. Um, so the automation of, for example, using a drone to fly a grid pattern um, done correctly, you could probably uh, resurvey a room in, in less than eight or ten minutes. Uh, flying a grid pattern, and that's uh, that's another area that you can sort of poke at and explore down the line. But um, so the practical applications, sort of rounding out, 
weak signals cause sadness. The survey tools for data gathering and analysis and understanding these weak signals helps the people fix the problem. As we can see, Sarah and, um, and bullet point number one here is at a manufacturing plant. She experienced weak signal throughout the building and she instructs the drone to survey the area for the signal strength. And then number four, once that signal strength data is transferred into Watson Studio and immersive data, Sarah can analyze and see the area here and, and, and really take corrective action. So uh, some things she may uh, want to do, she could change the, the RF and the Wi-Fi configurations, ideally in software, which would be a fairly fast thing to do, and then resurvey. Uh, there are things you can do with antenna radiation patterns, maybe some physical adjustments to the antennas, the, the equipment, the ground planes near them. Uh, maybe the installation of new transmitters or maybe the moving of certain objects that have been moved into the area and are, are blocking it. So um, things that can be done to perhaps improve and then learn from uh, in the long run and, and try to get lots of uh, green bubbles covering uh, the area. So that's uh, that's it. That's sort of an informal playback. Uh, I've got a, a few videos here um, of the demo. Thanks to everyone that sort of did that. There's our pattern here and there's our our friends up there. And then over here, we can see again, in the prior video, we had used both the volume or the size of the spheres, as well as the color to uh, convey um, uh, size of, uh, of the uh, signal at any node. So in this one, we were just using color. Uh, so some, um, some areas to explore there in terms of uh, user interface. Uh, and then lastly, as you saw in that, that video, um, we, um, here we are. Um, there's not currently a mechanism in place to block or occlude the data that's behind an object. So down the line, if you've got a way to have the system understand creative effectively a grid, a grid for opaque objects you should not be able to see through, you can basically block those uh, those spheres as well down the line. So, um, so anyways, that's uh, that's it for this uh, this playback in early May. Thanks to everyone that sort of leaned into it uh, this week. Uh, so this is a playback for Project Skittles uh, for May the third, and uh, thanks for watching.